All right, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Barely Famous. I have a special guest today, and I know that y'all have all seen her on TikTok or Instagram or read her book, Gabrielle Stone. What's up, Thank girl? you for coming to my <laughs> to come podcast with me. Um, where do we start? I, where do we start? I guess back at the very beginning. For, okay. <laughs> did you go? Did you write your book before you went viral, or did you go viral and then write your book? No. So I wrote my book in. Oh, God. Well, I wrote it in 2017 when all of this, like, shit happened to okay. me. Okay, okay. And then I didn't go viral until 2020. It was, like, mid-pandemic when everybody was, like – That's when I saw – that's when yeah. I found who you were. Yeah. Everyone was, like, TikTok this, TikTok that. And I was, like, I'm not getting on another fucking app right. to, like, <laughs> dance and shake my ass. I'm right. over 30. Like, this is not it. And – Lo and behold, I went on and started talking about the book, and it's gone viral multiple times. And like, did you self publish? I did. So you're okay. So then you, but people were buying it prior to this. So then you go yeah. viral, and then people, yeah, really picked up on it. Totally. Okay. Um, and it really changed the marketing game for me. Like, t- oh, hundred percent. When, when viral videos happen, you can't pay for marketing like that. You can't. Like, and you know what's crazy? I had a call with my publisher, um, probably three weeks ago about a, a novel that I'm working on. I've been working on. And oh, he fun. said that TikTok is now the best way to market your books for women. Yeah. Like for authors, women yeah. authors. Yeah. So I was, and the first person I thought it was you because oh, I was I like, that. I saw you on TikTok during the, I was big pregnant during the pandemic and I, <laughs> I had seen a TikTok and I was like, what the hell? And I start watching the videos. Now I have to go back and like listen to the story and like how all this happened. Yeah. It's like so a rabbit hole. <laughs> can you give, I don't want to give too much away. I know that there is a lot on social media, yeah. but can you talk about a little bit of what the book is about? Totally. Okay. So I was married for almost two years. Okay. Found out my husband was having an affair with a 19-year-old for six months. Okay. And, you know, that's like the synopsis of the beginning, um, but there was a lot of other women that came forward once the book was published oh. and once the social media stuff started happening. I've been – continuously getting like a trickle down of information that's been really interesting. Um, But I filed for divorce, left. Shortly after that, I met this guy and we fell madly. Like in person? Yeah. Well, okay. So (laughs) here we go. Um, So we had casually gone out twice before I met my ex-husband. And when when I say casual, I mean like we went to a dance spot, we danced, we made out a little bit. Like that was the extent okay. of our interaction. Sure, but you you knew he was a real person. He oh existed. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh for sure, no. And so he slid into my DMs and was like, "Where have you been for the last six years?" And I was like, "Well, funny story. Um, I've been fucking married." But <laughs> so we end up talking and we go to hang out and we it's like from zero to one hundred, like instantly, m- madly in love with each other within the span of like three days, and we both felt it. It was obviously like. I was just out of a brutal, you know, marriage situation. So I was, like, kind of cautious. But at the same time, I was just, like – It was magnetic. Yeah. It was, like, there, you know. Um, And he invited me within two days of us being together to go on a trip to Italy with him. And, of course, when someone does that, I'm, like, you're fucking crazy. What? (laughs) But also, yes. But also, it's Italy. So (laughs) let me think. And I was, like, when are you leaving? And he Mm -hmm. says September 4th, which would have been my two-year wedding anniversary. And I was like, okay, when are you coming back? And he says October 4th, which is my late father's birthday. So it's like a month? Yeah, a month. But like the dates, I was like, okay, universe, I hear you. Right, right. Signs, I guess I'm going to fucking Italy. Yeah. Okay. Um, So we booked the trip. We're together for like a month and a half leading up to it. I meet his family. Everything's just like – all of his friends, all of his family, they're like, we've never seen him like this. I can't believe you came into his life at this time. This is so magical, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I know. I feel it too. Great. Oh, my God. Love it. Going to Italy. Um, 48 hours before we were getting on the plane, he tells me he needs to go by himself and breaks up with me. And when I tell you I was devastated, like, my ex-husband could not have broken my heart this way if he tried. Like, I was – Well, because you were – you went from zero to 100. So, so quickly. Yeah. So that the, you're already – completely invested like head yes first. yes okay. and like it was at like the height of the honeymoon stage yes. like we were just like amazing in love meeting my family like we're planning like it. way down the road and two days like I have my bag packed sitting in my room and I'm getting this news from him and I'm like okay did you answer him oh yeah like this was a phone call okay um and you know crocodile tears obviously because I'm just like what the hell is happening yeah and I'm sitting on my bed at my mom's house because that's where you move after you get divorced at 28 at the time (laughs) I understand (laughs) I was like well going back to mom's and I was sitting on my bed and I was like well I can either stay at home heartbroken or I can go travel Europe for a month by myself right because you had already 
bag was it. packed, ticket was booked. I was like, I guess I'm going to Europe. Um, and I did. I took uh, took a backpack and did six countries over the span of a month. And then on that trip, I wrote the book Eat, Pray, FML. This is insane. <laughs> Wait, so did you not see him on the flight? Oh, girl, we sat next to each other. Oh, yeah. For Wait. 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> that flight is not fun. I also no. did it in, I think, 2018. Yeah. Um, I flew into Germany, or Germany, then Barcelona. It's long, um, long It's a long flight. flight. And <laughs> so you were next to each other. Yes. He actually picked me up to go to the airport. We were at the airport together. Um, he actually took the photo of me standing with my backpack where I kind of, like, announced my divorce and what had happened to everybody because I hadn't publicly come out to say any of this except for my really close circle. Right. I was like, well, if I'm going on this, like, soul-searching journey, I might as well start with a clean slate. So I posted this photo and had, you know, all of the, you know, I got cheated on and this is what happened and now I'm going on this crazy trip alone. And so many comments came in before I got on the plane in those two hours where people were like, this totally changed my day. This gave me so much hope. Please continue sharing your journey. Mm -hmm. Because I was going to like disconnect and like be off social media for the month I was traveling. Right. And that really inspired me. And I was like, well, okay, people are affected by this. Like, let me, let me be open and share my journey on social media. So I really, you know, if I was out partying, that's what people saw. But a lot of the times when I was like sitting and writing and crying, like, I was very authentic in what I posted because right. I think there's so much of that lacking yeah. in social media. Um, and it's so much fun now. And I'm so glad that I did it because when people are reading the book, they'll go back and look at all the Instagram photos and be like, this is the place she was talking about. And it's like this picture book that you can go through while you're reading it, which is kind of cool. Well, it, it really puts the real in yeah. all of it. You know, yeah. like what you're saying is matching exactly what you right. posted. So that's crazy. But, yeah. So once you landed in Europe, Y'all just split up? So our flight was booked from LAX to London and then a hopper flight to Rome, Okay, which is where we were supposed to start the trip. So I stayed in London and started my trip there, and he went on to Rome. So we had, like, an emotional goodbye at that airport, and I was like, all right, bye. (laughs) What Did he give you a reasoning for why he needed to do this trip? Yes, yes. So he really tragically lost his brother to suicide about a year and a half before I came into his life. Okay. Um, And we had talked about it really openly, and he had said how badly he struggled with it, which is, of course, um, but that he had really found some peace in it and felt like he was on the other side of all of that. Okay. His story to me was that when I fell in love with you, it kind of opened up everything I had pushed down for so long and that grief, and it kind of all came like flooding up and was really overwhelming. Okay. Do you believe that? Um, If I was doing this interview before I wrote the sequel. (laughs) You would have believed it? I would have said yes. Um, Do I think there is elements that were at play of that? Yes. But I know that that's not like the full story. So when he calls you to tell you, you know, he needs to do this trip by himself. And do you right then and there, do you tell him I'm going to go anyway? Like I'm still going to go by myself? So... I – no. I took a night to cry myself to sleep. And then the next day we were supposed to meet to kind of like talk through everything. Okay. And I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason, yeah. even if you can't see it when you're in the shit of it. Um, right. <laughs> but I lost my dad when I was six years old pretty traumatically. And since then it's always been my thing to feel fear of abandonment okay. or when I love someone they leave or when right. I love someone they die. Um, it's plagued me like my whole – existence right and this was the universe's very clear way of being like okay gabrielle well we're gonna go face that shit head on so you're gonna go across the world to learn how to be the fuck alone and love yourself i was like okay i mean that's one way to do it even though i'm like very heartbroken right now Mm -hmm. and this sucks like i could see why it was happening right like how it was being orchestrated right um so we met up that next day and that was when i was like look i think i'm still gonna go and he what was his reaction he was really like excited for me it it was very weird I don't know if it was because of the connection that we had but even on the plane it wasn't awkward like it felt like this was supposed to happen yeah but it felt like everything was the same with our our soul connection we just weren't making out now and like holding hands yeah um but it felt like we had established this like weird you know friendship soul thing tie yeah did you guys communicate the entire time you were on the trip it was like up and down um and I don't want to give too much away of that because that really dives into the book and like what ended up happening because it it's not like he just poof went into the ethers and was like okay bye I'm gonna go like on this journey by myself without reading it I thought it was like he 
broke up with you and then you went and then no unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you look at it because yeah. again everything happens for a reason um he is definitely a strong supporting character throughout the book and also appears in the sequel okay okay where are you at with it Okay, I can't even ask. No, 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 you can. Um, where are you? Where are you at with him now? Yeah. So after the first book, he was actually really supportive of it. Like I told him, you know, when I decided I was going to write it, which was the day I found out I was going by myself. I was like, I'm going to write a book about this because the shit that has gone down in my life in the past two months has been like a horror sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> like all wrapped into one. It yeah. like felt like a Netflix show was happening in my life. Um. So I knew I was going to write it. I started it the first day on my trip, um, and I wrote three-fourths of it on the trip in my leather-bound journal by hand. Um, so most of it was done by the time I came home. It was very, like, a clear direction of where it was going. Had you written before? No. I mean, I had I loved my creative writing classes, and I can right. bullshit the hell out of an English essay, yeah. but, no, but no, I was not, like, a writer right. by any means, no. And now would you call yourself a writer? I mean, I guess I have to. Like, I've had two best-selling yeah, books, so for sure. I gotta, <laughs> gotta own Give that. Give yourself some credit. <laughs> No, yeah. It, it took me a while to get comfortable with it, but yes. Um, so he was really supportive of the first book and, uh-huh. like, championed that for me. Anyone that I included text messages from in the book, which is him and his mother and his sister, everyone had to sign a release form for yeah. me. So everybody was really supportive of the first book. Um, not so much about the second. Um, I Speaking for him individually, uh, he was not stoked to uh, – to find out that there was a sequel Why? being written. Um, well, it's not great when you behave badly um, to know that that's then going to be read by But then be a good a fucking person. People. Totally, 100%. I have people on my podcast all the time where it's like, yeah, if you wanted to not be spoken about or written about, fucking behave better. It's that simple. <laughs> like people wouldn't have – I mean, obviously, perception is everything, right? So like certain, no matter how good of a person you are, pe- some people will perceive you. 100%. You know, you, you're going to be the villain in somebody's story. But, totally. Um, I mean – And I genuinely – that's so funny that you phrase it like that because I feel that he – because he felt so bad about what he did and like his actions towards me that he's now made me the villain in his story because he can't come to terms with that any other way. But I thought it started out so, like, understanding and Oh, supportive. it did. It did. I think that it was like he felt like he owed me the first one in the first book. And then the second one was like, mm. No, but you you <laughs> played this part in my life. You did this. And I deserve to write about it. 100%. That's, Not all people feel that way. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I've also been in a situation where I'm like, no, you don't deserve to feel that way. But, like, you do, but don't write about it. Right, you know? right, right. But also, like, I get it. Yeah. You know? Um. What has been, like, the craziest ex- part of this whole experience, like, going viral and writing the book? Mm. And have you experienced any hate, like, oh, towards yeah. you? Yeah. Um, ugh, it's so interesting. You're bringing up all the stuff that, like, is just, like, that I'm just talking about and opening up on. So I, in the book, write a lot about, you know, what I'm eating and, like, eating my way through Europe. And... At the time, I was so insecure in myself because Mm -hmm. I had just gotten cheated on and then I got my heart broken. Mm -hmm. Um, And I really felt insecure in my body. I also have a history with eating disorders from Mm -hmm. my past. Um, So control and the way that my body looks to me has always been a really big thing. I also grew up in Hollywood right? as an actress where people are like, cool, if you're not this size, like eight other girls are and goodbye. Yeah. Um, So in the book... I harped on, you know, how I felt uncomfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. Um, So I've had a few people come after me for being fat phobic. And to me, I I had Hunter McGrady on my my podcast um, to discuss it Mm -hmm. and was like, look, if I need to know something about this, educate me because I'm not understanding how me dragging myself (laughs) and being like shitty towards my own self would constitute that that word or, or well because I'm on the that. opposite side of it so like I I hate my body for how big I am but that doesn't mean that I am skinny phobic right well the way that she explained it to me was it's not the fact that you were criticizing your body or saying oh my god I feel so this or this it was the fact that you were using the word fat and that made it a negative like connotation to the word and I was like okay I'm I can understand that. So I self-published, which is great. So I went back and I changed all the verbiage and changed a couple of those things to make it very clear that I was talking about my, you know, discomfort within myself. Right. Um, So stuff like that has happened. Um, I've recently 
I, I did a couple TikToks with my mom, who's an actress, and mm-hmm. now people are like, oh, well, you only got a publishing deal because No, you literally you were published. Thank you. Thank you. But, you know, the People the are so comes. ignorant that I literally cannot deal with it. Yeah. Like, they have no idea what they're talking about before I know. they open their fucking mouths. I know. I will say that that's few and far between, though. Like, that's yeah. definitely, like, 5 to 10% mm-hmm. of any, like, comments or reviews that I see. Right. And, like, the, the other 90 is amazing. And that's probably been the biggest gift in my life mm-hmm. from all the books going viral and stuff is that it's become global. So yeah. I have readers that are in New Zealand and Tanzania and, like, wild, like, worldly places. Like, know who you are and read yeah. your books. Yeah, and, like, the messages that I get from those people that – because the book's so much more than – you know, this like ridiculous Netflix show, it really does feel like you're sitting down and having a glass of wine with me. Mm -hmm. So people really feel like they know me at the end. But it's so much about self-love and going inside and like figuring out what's going on and how to heal yourself Mm -hmm. that the messages I've gotten from people are really profound and really amazing. And I read every single DM that I get that's about the book because they're so personal yeah um and I feel that responsibility to like connect with that person that's gone on this journey with me so that's mm-hmm. probably been the biggest thing. like takeaway yeah I love I when I got divorced I never felt so liberated in my mm-hmm. entire life um like I traveled I went to Europe I went to Hawaii I did I went skydiving like I did all these oh things um, I don't know if I could ever do skydiving <laughs> <laughs> I also skydived in Hawaii um but I, I it was just one of those things where you really do the soul searching. Yeah. And I think even though your story is obviously a little bit different, you did the soul searching that you need to do in Europe. Totally. And, and I love that. It, it, it changed my life. Like I came back from that trip a different person. Have you gone back since? No, but I'm going back this year. You are? Yeah. Are you going, excited? Are you going to go to the same places or you try to go? So my my now boyfriend and I um, are – This remember everyone, this is years ago. I'm not yes. just like cycling yeah, yeah. through all the men. Um, but – we're going to um, Italy for 10 days, and then my girlfriend is getting married in London, so we're going there, and then the whole wedding party is going to Greece. Oh so my gosh. one of the places we're going in Greece is Mykonos, and I went there on my trip. So I'm going to try and take one of the books to um, – his name is Jimmy. He has this little, like – I always say it wrong. Is it Euro or Gyro, like the meat? The really I think incredible- it's a hero. I don't know. I'm going to fuck it up either way. I'm looking to see if anyone can <laughs> I know. We're all, like, gyro, looking for help. Gyro. Anyways, gyro, gyro, euro, whatever it is. Um, and he owns, like, this little shop there that's amazing, and I wrote about him in the book. So I'm going to oh. go back and try and take him one. Oh, my God. That's so cute. Yeah. I'll and then I'll be in London there. again, and yeah. I, that's where I started it. So I love that for you. Yeah. Does your Does your now boyfriend ever get upset about, like, you still talking about – no, and I honestly feel like I'm with the one man on the planet <laughs> that would, you know, because it's not an easy thing. I literally talk about my exes. Well, because even if you're healed, which I, it sounds like you are. Yeah, totally. I mean, if you're in a new relationship, you're probably healed. But, like, to still talk about it. Yeah. Um, Five days a week, minimum. Yeah. Like, it's a lot. That would be a lot for someone, right? Yeah, so. whether it's on social media or on the podcast or on whatever. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. Um, He's also written about in my second book. So, okay. like, our whole – meeting and like crazy journey is in the second book okay so he's been in it for a very long time yeah. um but he is the most supportive person there's never been one time where he's been like okay can we chill or can we maybe not he's and and his response is i see how many women you're helping yeah and it's far greater than any like insecurity i would have well and i would hope that he doesn't like see your pain and then use it against you oh, you know no, what no. I mean like no yeah so I love that I, th- I think that's super helpful I, I also am with someone now who just doesn't care like when I'm talking about my experience on tv or oh, social yeah. media or whatever like he's not like can you stop yeah you but know you need someone especially when you're in like a public forum yeah you it have takes a strong person someone. yeah but not everyone can do it no and so that's the hard part is yeah. like finding someone that will yeah and my understand my ex-husband was so the opposite like People always ask, like, were there red flags before all this? And one of the main ones was that he was so insecure around my career. Like, he met me when I was pursuing my dreams as an actress. Mm -hmm. And part of that is flying to different locations and different sets. And sometimes you have to do a scene that has a makeout or an intimacy moment. It's, like, the most uncomfortable, awkward thing for the actors to do. And it's obviously it's difficult for someone as a partner. But he had known that from the very beginning. And the – insane insecurity that he had and like how he would you know call me on set and I would end up in tears every night and it was like ruining my experience of like 
these jobs that yeah. I was booking, like I'm working so hard on. Um, so I, I feel like I've had the two polar opposites of that, like someone who is very insecure and like can't handle, which ended up being so ironic because he ended up being the one that was cheating, um, and someone who's so secure in themselves and so supportive and like really like knows my triggers and like takes care and protects them and like you can grow in a relationship in a really safe right, way when right. you have someone like that. Has your your ex-husband ever reached out since like the books and your experience with Yeah. Oh, he's such a gem that one. Um <laughs> <laughs> So on ep- I think it's episode 3 on my podcast called FML Talk. It I kind of got into the um beginning stages of it. Okay. <clears throat> but more or less because he knew that he didn't have a case to take me to court because, A, everything in the book is true. B, like, there's a lot of laws that protect writers. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can't just, like, stomp your feet and be right. pissed off that someone's, like, telling a story. Um, he took to shutting down my social media pages. I feel like I vaguely remember that. Possibly. <laughs> Was that one that you, like, went viral? Um, no? no, I don't think so. Um I probably did some type of video about it, but I didn't open up, like, too much about really what was going on because there was so much, like, legal stuff happening. Okay. Um, But, yeah, he basically paid a hacker to shut my books page down and my podcast page down because he was upset. Um, I learned more about the dark web than I ever wanted to learn. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Um, and we eventually got the books page back, which was mm-hmm. great because I had, like, really, you know, built a following of my readers on that. Um, the podcast page was brand new and it had, like, 800 followers. So, so we just like, started fine. it over. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's been really interesting to see his trajectory in his life. Um, I, I get messages about it from people I don't even know that, like, update me on insane stuff what, that he's doing. When the girls reached out to you about – his um, extracurricular activities. Yes. Like, what did you do with that information? Did you, like, talk to them, or did you just kind of, like, let them sit? Yeah. Or, like, what did you... So, <laughs> okay, so there were two two specific ones. Um, the first, I got a DM on TikTok mm-hmm. um, when that first video I had went viral about the book, and she DM'd me and was like, are you so-and-so's ex-wife? Um, I'm currently in a legal battle with him. Like, a legal battle. Yeah, like I'm trying to sue him. And I, to be honest, I judged what I saw on her page. It was a lot of nakedness. Um, okay. And that was kind of like the girl that he – the 19-year-old that he ended up cheating on me with. And I was like, whatever this is, I don't want anything to do right, with this. Right, right. Um, then when the hacking stuff came about, I remembered her – saying you know I'm in a legal thing with him and so I reached out to her and we ended up talking brought her on an episode of my podcast and the story that she told about him was fucking insane what episode number so people can Uh, okay so the one where I explain what happened was episode three and she was on episode four okay um you might okay so when Australia was on fire, yes, and I remember. She, okay, and she like sold her nudes and sent like two million dollars to Australia. Her her handle yes. used to be the Naked Philanthropist. That's her. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> My ride's here. <laughs> My ride is here. Yeah. Um. So she came on, and the story that she, I mean, knows my ex obviously knows his girl that you know the nineteen year old. It, it was wild. I was like, my my life has become an episode of CSI. Like, this have, is insane. Have they not reached out to you? Like, Netflix hasn't reached out to you for not yet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this needs to be an entire series. Yeah, it was insane. So we actually connected, and she's a super amazing girl. And I even said on the on the episode, I was like, I totally judged you when you reached out to me, and like, I'm sorry. You're so well spoken. This, you're so great. Um, and then the second one was actually someone that he used to work with. Okay. Who, while y'all were married? Yeah. Well, I, that I didn't know well, but I had met her a few times, and she she messaged me online and was like, are you open to talking about me? I'm going through a recovery program, and I need to make amends with everyone in my life, and I need to apologize to you. So I said, I, I don't know this person. Like, I literally met her briefly twice. And I said, okay, because, um, you know, anything to help people heal. Um, and so I got on the phone with her, and she was basically like, I exchanged a lot of, like, inappropriate text messages and nude photos with your husband while I knew you guys were together and married. And I was like, okay, thank you for telling me. I, I uh, This is all of you. <laughs> Whatever you need, I forgive you. Um 
But you didn't have any feelings about it at the Honestly, time? Honestly, by that time, it's like the stuff that people tell me now or if they send me stuff from his social media now, mm-hmm. it's laughable. Right. Like it's right. literally comedy. It doesn't hurt the same. Um, no. If at all, probably. No. Um, and honestly, even when I found out about the 19-year-old, I was – I felt betrayed. I felt – How did you find out? <sighs> it's detailed in the book. Okay. What's but the, the- – Okay. Cliff notes um, is I ended up in his trash email, didn't even go digging for it. Like, it was open on his computer. Um, and there were receipts of, like, the Four Seasons a mile from our house and all of these different date nights and hotels that our wedding guests stayed at when he took her to. Like, really, like, ridiculous stuff. Um, so it was all listed out. Isn't it crazy? Like, men are so dumb. So dumb. Like, beyond – he had a second phone. But like, also it was just like, wild. if you're going to go to those lengths. It must be exhausting. You're tired. You're yeah. not sleeping at night because you're constantly right. wondering. You're sleeping with your phone under your pillow, which I have done when I was a cheater. Oh, um, my God. Because I did cheat when I was younger. Um, but like the, the, the mental exhaustion, no, exhaustion. Let me tell you, yes. when I met <laughs> my boyfriend now, I literally cut off everyone for him. And I never felt so at peace yeah because i'm not looking at i don't care who's in my phone like yeah. i'm not, you know what i mean so like just knowing that there was a time where i had to watch my phone i had to take my phone to the bathroom like it's exhausting so when i think of men yeah. doing it and they do it for like years and years and years yeah what the fuck just yeah. be single I just know. be single like just get a divorce but it- you know what i think it's that they they think if they're honest with women about their intentions and what they want they won't get what they want mm. does that make sense yeah so that's why they have to go to these lengths. But I'm like, you're so dumb because there are women who will sleep with you even if you don't want to commit in a relationship yeah. and you're with other women. Like, yeah. there are women who will. But they just – I don't know. They're dumb. I can't, I don't get it. I think, honestly, in this particular situation, he married me and then quickly found out I was not the one to manipulate and do the sort of things that he had in his mind of, like, wanting to do. Right. Um, although – if you look at a photo of him today and you look at a photo from our wedding, like, it's not the same person. Like, physically, you would be like, that's not that's not the same guy, right? It, it's very jarring to see the change that has happened, and I cannot stress enough how fucking Karma. thankful I am to have, like, gotten out of that before it yeah. was worse. That's karma. Yeah. I'm assuming it's in a bad way. He doesn't look the same. Um, I mean, to each their own, but, like, ha- he was, like, clean skin, no tattoos when I met him. Now he's covered in tattoos, has cornrows, um, very... Just very different? Just very different. Um, I, there's, yeah, his How face looks looks different. Have, I don't, have I don't your followers and the people who support you, like, found out who he is? Um, some. It's not impossible, um... They actually care less about who my ex-husband is and more about the guy who dumped me before Europe. They care more about him. Yeah. Um, and some people have, have done their their Due investigative diligence. skills <laughs> um, and found out who they are, but I never talk about them publicly because at the end of the day, like, they're both characters in my story. Right. I'm so far removed from each of them, especially my ex-husband. The, the other ex took a little bit longer to get removed from, but I feel like I'm finally – you're finally you know, there. have rounded that corner to be like, no, it's really a character in this this journey that I went through. Well, I'm glad you're beyond that because we don't need shitty men. We men, don't need shitty men. We really <laughs> don't need shitty men. I'm so sick of shitty men. Like, I can't. I literally, I've had enough. I have three baby dads and I just, it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, enough. I'm in co-parenting hell. Everyone just literally. leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> I can't. I don't, I literally can't. I, oh my God. No, I'm... <laughs> I've been through the trenches, so. I, I can't even imagine. And honestly, my my boyfriend now, who people read about in the sequel, um, like I'll bring him on the podcast and people will DM me, and his name's Tyler in the book. Um, people will DM me and be like, am I ever going to find a Tyler? And now I like I joke with him and I'm like, you're on a really fucking high, high pedestal. pedestal. Yeah. Don't fuck up. You can't fuck <laughs> up because also you'll write people a book are, about it. People are looking at us being like, this is the ideal relationship for better or worse. So like, just remember that in the back of your mind. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all, <laughs> but pressure. Literally. <laughs> Have you had like done collabs with anyone or met anyone like that you really connected with because of this or had anyone on the podcast um yeah so I actually 
um, Tori Deal from the challenge mm-hmm. um, was, and I'm a big reality TV junkie. Like I, <laughs> I was going to add, that's actually on my list of questions. Like, oh, are yeah. you watching anything oh, right now? Oh, yeah. Total reality TV junkie. I watched you in high school. Like, you know, <laughs> we're it's full circle, guys. Right. Full circle. Um, but Tori Deal from the challenge was the first kind of, I guess I hate the word influencer, but like influential right. person who read my book and loved it and started posting about it. We've become really good friends from okay. that. Um, I had Morgan Willette from Big Brother mm-hmm. and um, and also The Challenge on, on my podcast. Um, the podcast has been a really interesting journey for me because everybody was like, you should do a podcast, you should do a podcast. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck am I going to talk about? Like, yeah. no. Um, and then I got forced into doing it in the pandemic, which is like <laughs> when everything happened. Yep. Um, and it's become such an incredible space. I mean, we talk about anything that's covered in the book, like relationships, um, traumas, healing journeys, whatever. But now bringing guests on and stuff – It's become a really safe space for women to come on and share their stories. Right. Um, That was what Morgan came on and talked about, like, her pretty famous ex um, and, like, their breakup and her cheating story. Right. And it's it's given me a new way to – and I'm sure you know this – to connect with the people that are following you and listening to you. Yeah. Um, And it's been really special to, like – hear those people be like yeah this has really been better than therapy for me no seriously though and even podcasting alone is sometimes like therapeutic oh totally i love it yeah i i i literally just got out of like a three-week depressive episode and i didn't podcast for three weeks and being back i'm like this is what i'm meant to do yeah it's like therapy i so. love that and yeah. you're you're like you have you're like a juggling act with all your podcasts <laughs> i'm like how many can i realistically have I mean, before <laughs> as long as you're talking about different shit on each and yeah I, try, I do my best i try not to overlap but it gets hard um so what other shows are you watching besides you like the challenge but what <sighs> else? did you do you watch selling sunset I watched the first three seasons, okay. yes. But um, that's, to be honest, oh my God, don't come for me. Um, it's kind of like the what I'll go to sleep to or like on in the background when I'm working. Yeah. No, um, we all have those shows. Yeah, because I really, I love all, I think all the women on there are awesome, but right. um, I watch it for the houses. Like yeah. I'm, I'm fucking, see the houses. I'm like, uh, I'm manifesting my dream house yeah. <laughs> for like yeah. in a couple of years. <laughs> um, I just finished the ultimatum. Oh my gosh, which I is started that. such a shit show. Insane. Oh my God. No, but literally, so- April follows me on TikTok and yeah. I followed her back. Yeah. Um, and don't come for me if you hear this. Um, <laughs> I did not like her on that show yeah. because I was like, what the fuck is this? And right. Jake is so fine that I was like, what the, f- what is going on here? Right. Um, that show's insane. Yeah. I know. And also the real villains here are Nick Lachey and Vanessa Lachey. Dude, did They're you- the actual <laughs> villains of all of this. So there's a, there was a meme I saw the other day that was like a picture of Nick and Vanessa Lachey and it was like, so you know how people are mentally unstable and then it was like Netflix, we love it. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that's so accurate. No, but so they they did Love, love is, is Blind, Blind, which I also watched. I really, um, reality TV, man. It's... Actually, Shake, I think is my next interview after you. Oh my God, nice. Yeah, no, I'm... I'm not a shake. Well, fan, wait, so. not nice, but like, but like that'll nice. be interesting. Right. Like we'll great see. interview, but yeah. like oh, um, interesting. No, the ultimatum to me was crazier than Love is Blind. Yes, I agree. I'm about I've been DMing with Ray to get her on the podcast, although they need like approval and shit from From Netflix. Yeah. Like it's like, it's like crazy. But it's they a whole do other thing. A fantastic job not posting to their social media. Like imagine filming yeah. for a show and not being able to post for like a year. Right. Like your actual life outside right. of like by yourself. Right. But I need to know like is Jake in a relationship? Not that I want him because I'm in a relationship yeah. but like he's so cute. Right. And I need to know if he ended up with somebody, you know? Yeah. I'll ask. Um, I'll let you know. Yeah. Let me know. I'll DM you. I need all the, de- <laughs> <laughs> need all the details. Um, what else? What, anything else that you're watching? Oh uh, God. I'm trying to think of like some non-reality shows that are like good scripted content to suggest to people. Um, we in the pandemic we started Grey's Anatomy from the season beginning. one. I also did that. We got through it too quickly, I will say. Oh shit! <laughs> so now we're up to date. But like honestly, the earlier seasons are where it's really at. Like, oh yeah. When Sandra Oh was still on the show, it was just so good. I um I also started that during the pandemic, I think, and um I didn't think I was gonna like it. Yeah. And I oh loved my it. god. Okay. Here's. <laughs> Sorry. I'm like, let's get off of reality TV and back to reality TV. Um. Uh, Temptation Island. I didn't see that, but I saw a commercial for it last night. Okay. It's, I think this is season three or four that's airing right now. It's, it's anxiety. It's anxiety in a show. (laughs) In a TV show. Um, okay, no. So, and I, and then I have like personal tea to it that I'll tell you in a second. So (laughs) it's basically, you know, four, I think four couples, um, that are like, oh, we're not sure if we're going to take the next step or like, you know, we've had trouble, trouble in our relationship in the past, whatever, like some type of 
issue. Okay. And they bring them to the island, which okay. is like I think Maui or whatever. And then they split them up and the men go to one villa and the girls go to another villa and then they put 10 fucking singles in there and they're like, "Have fun. Good luck." Yeah. It's, so it's kind of like the ultimatum, but like not. Okay. But like worse. And then they'll oh, take no. them like once a week. They take them to Bonfire where they'll show them clips. And you know how reality TV is. It's like what clip are they going to show and like what context. They'll show them clips of what their partner is doing on the other side no, of the island. Literally no. It's, it's insane. anxiety in a show, but like I can't tell you it's so good. So, okay. Here we go. <laughs> So my girl Casey Campbell Uh um, was on season one of that. She's my girl now. She wasn't my girl when she did the show. But I knew her boyfriend because he was at my wedding. Yeah. He (laughs) is – Wait, wait, how – so you just knew him? I knew him because he was at my wedding and he was friends with my ex-husband and I used to see them at the him at the gym all the sure, time. Sure, so like sure. we weren't friends, but I like I knew, knew him. him. Um, and I turn on Temptation Island one night and I'm like, holy fucking shit. And I'm like, Tay, my boyfriend, I'm like, Tay, get in here. And I'm like, this fucking dude was at my wedding. Like, this is insane. I proceed to watch the whole episode. It's I, not the whole episode, the whole um, season. season. It's so cringy. He's the worst person on the planet on there. And you're like, this is the energy I had at my wedding. Dude, he ends up with another girl um, on the show. Sorry, spoiler alert. Um, leaves her, like, trashes her on national television. It's horrible. His girlfriend? Yes. Oh, no. Ten years they were together. Like, something insane like that. And just, like, ends up with another chick, leaves with her. And, Please like, tell me they're not together now. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, hold on. So the book comes out. I then get DMs from his new girl that he ended up with and from Casey, who I had never connected with before. They've both been on the podcast now. Um, They're both not fans of his anymore, and he is still best friends with my ex-husband. And when I brought Casey on the podcast, she was like, okay, so two days before your wedding – your your ex came over. We call him Daniel because that's his name in the book. She's like, Daniel came over to my house and like him and my dude were hanging out and like smoking weed. And he was like, I don't know what's going on. And he was like, what do you mean? And my ex apparently says, she's just going crazy. She's spending all this money and she's like draining me and this wedding is costing so much. And like, I just don't feel, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Like basically voicing and talking shit on me. When you're getting married <laughs> two, in days two days before. before the wedding, which mind you, my mom paid for the whole thing. Like, so he didn't no. get drained of money. No. Um, and we're sitting here having this conversation and I'm just like, dude, it was happening like before we even, like, why would you even show up at that point? If but, that's how you felt, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, why even come? Let's just cancel it. Um, but her story is just absolutely insane. Like, what she's gone through on that fucking show. Reality is brutal. It, it is. <laughs> Reality TV is brutal. Well, and for shows like that, I feel like a lot of them, they don't have longevity. So you're right. literally putting a 10-year relationship on the line for what? A couple minutes of yeah. literal 15 minutes of fame? Yeah. Yeah. Like, a lot of the – I'm not saying that, I, you know – Everyone doesn't have a following or, you know, create some type of business or something from it. But a lot of them don't. Right. So you're putting your real life things on the line for that. I mean, I know for her, she was like, thank God this happened. Right. I don't know if I would have left him otherwise. Right. 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 But yeah, it's brutal, man. Even the ultimatum. Like, that's that's what they're doing. They're like, okay, well, put up or shut up. And like, half of them aren't together anymore. (laughs) That's so crazy. That yeah. is so crazy. I don't know that I – ultimatums don't work. Right. Um, like, why would you want to give that to ultim- someone anyways? No. That, like, no. Yeah. I know. I looked at my boyfriend. I was like, we should go on this show. And he's like, <laughs> fuck no. Um, he's like, no, I'll get I, down on one knee right now. No, thank you. Literally. <laughs> I just wanted to see what his reaction was. But oh it's my God, just never. insane. Like, never. I just don't think I, I – it's so hard. Like, I went through the nastiest public divorce. And it just – yeah. I never defended myself, never, you know, stuck up for myself. Yeah. And um, I can't even imagine. I worry so much about putting my relationship now, like, out there. I mean, even my last relationship before yeah. this one, I never posted him. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to – because I just didn't want to ruin it because of yeah. reality TV or social media. Like, I just yeah. didn't want to take that risk. No, and people are ruthless. Oh, like, they are. That judge and, like, have no idea what it is. I mean, I – my divorce, when I went through it – I wasn't public really right. yet and didn't totally. have like a following like I have now. And 
still like the embarrassment and the shame and the judgments coming from people that knew me and knew right. him, you know, mm-hmm. that were in our our like world. Circle. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was wild. So I can't even imagine going through that on like a public scale. Oh, it's horrible because then you have like people who take sides and people like not everything that comes out is it's their perception. So yeah. like if my ex-husband said something, that is his perception of what happened. Right. Right. You know, like that doesn't mean that's actually what happened. That doesn't mean that's how I perceived it, totally. you know? So just like very um weird. And then Do you get a lot of trolls on TikTok and I on a, social media? I would say Instagram has it, Twitter and Instagram have the Oh, I won't even of, fuck with Twitter anymore. Oh, I shut mine I'm down like for that reason. In there. <laughs> they're I don't think though they're like mentally stable people. Right. On Twitter. Mm. And I just can't yeah. with Twitter. Yeah. So I just was like, let me shut this down. But what do they come for you for? Like, what's the hate that Three you Three baby get? dads. Um, I pushed my husband into – my ex-husband in 2012. I physically pushed right. him. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I did cheat on my ex-boyfriend when I was 18. Mm-hmm. Um, well, okay. I mean – I feel like 18 and under, like, high school stuff. Like, Doesn't fucking count. That's like we should be forgiven for that by well, now. <laughs> and then when my my ex-husband was deployed, I had already filed for divorce. And then we both were with other people. Mm-hmm. And then we did talk about getting back together. But they'll say I cheated while he was deployed. Right. Well, then what was he doing? Right. What was he, what he, right. what he did wasn't cheating. He was the one in the service, not me. it's also, like, not their fucking business. <laughs> but also, like, you know, we were both doing the same thing, but it's only okay that he, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. And so, and I think um, those are, like, the main yeah. things. The trolls that I get most on TikTok are triggered men. Um, really? Oh, yeah. Like, any video that goes viral that's, like, talking about, the book or where, why because like, you turned your pain and your experience into a profit and yeah, a business and pretty like, much pretty much empowerment but i'll tell you like all the comments are probably like oh you know you weren't probably sucking dick enough at home or maybe you should make a sandwich more like such misogynistic shit and oh it's like you God. know they're just like fucking sad little men that are living in their mother's basement so you're like okay i'll just block you and send you into the ethers of the internet goodbye <laughs> but like that's that's the trolling that I get most of. That's so interesting. Yeah. I wouldn't have expected that. Oh, yeah. It's very rare that I get hate from women. It's usually Mine is all men. hate from women. Wow. Yeah. It's what all does that feel from... like? Because for me, I'm just like, okay, obviously it's going to be men that are popping off, like saying stupid shit yeah. like that. But um, that I must be tough. On um, It must have been on another podcast. I don't – all my days are running together. <laughs> um, it's always women and it's always women who claim that they're super happy and they're fulfilled and they have kids and husbands that love them and mm-hmm. a degree and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, happy people do not do this. Yeah. They don't do this. That's so right. like you can sit here and tell me until you're blue in the face that you're happy and you know, I'm the worst person on this planet. Yeah. But you don't see me ripping people to shreds on the internet. No, dude. I have never in my life, even when I was miserable and unhappy and depressed, been like Ooh, I should like tear this person down and Literally. say some bullshit to them from behind my phone screen. I started antidepressants last week and I never even, you know, like that's how low I'm at. That's yeah. where I'm at. And I never commented on someone's stuff no. saying horrible things. Yeah. Like it's just not. But I I think they don't realize how miserable they are. Yeah. And they're like, because they, have they to really take it do... out on someone else. Right. And so yeah. they actually believe that they are happy right. and then. But I'm like, I don't know how. Sipping your own Kool-Aid, man. <laughs> Insane. Okay, so I have some cheating, some famous cheater stuff. Oh, God. That okay. people have written in. Oh, God. Okay. These are um, people who have cheated and admitted okay. to their cheating. Okay. And you, we're going to get your reaction. Oh, my God. Best friends slept with my boyfriend on my birthday, and they showed up at my party together. I mean, I know you can't see this, but my mouth is just open. Can they not? Can they, <laughs> right here. <laughs> <laughs> um insane what the fuck dude yeah okay that's not a that's not a best friend obviously uh, no but like best friends slept with my boyfriend on my birthday that's so fucked up like so how fu- low first can of you all be? it's fucked up regardless if it's on the birthday or not it's just fucked up that's horrible and like also you know that's just as much her fault like the, they should both be cut out oh both of them for that yeah for sure like, i never understood the like just being mad at one person no it's or like, like it taking takes... the guy back and not being mad at the girl no, no, no. It's like... it takes two people to like put the p in the vag guys come on yeah, get come it on together <laughs> the ex sent me pics from the ring camera and said it wasn't him i found out in the airport on our way to a beach vacation when he was proposing 
Oh my How, god. I cannot stand the people who you have physical proof and evidence yeah. and they're still denying. That's a fucking narcissist for you to be like that's not me. That's not what you're seeing. You're fucking crazy. It's like no bitch, this is literally you literally in your the face. photo. This is you on the camera like an actual video. Oh that's insane. Oh my god, dude. I would have honestly like taken the ticket and fucking left his ass and been like, "Bye, I'm going solo. Have fun." Literally, Go that home. would eat, eat, pray, fuck my life. I mean, literally. <laughs> bye bye. Um, I cheated with my first husband's best friend for two years. Three years later, my affair partner was the best man at my ex's second wedding. Three years. Wait, I'm gonna Hold need on. you to read that again. I need to, like, there were two draw minutes, like out. my brother's mother's cousin. <laughs> I cheated with my first husband's best friend for two years. Okay. Three years later, my affair partner was the best man at my ex. Second wedding. I, I, okay. Let's just so take the if, first part of that. That that's wrong. To to ha- I mean, what? Why are you? Why is your best friend willing to sleep with your his best friend's wife? Like, yeah, that's weird. and I mean, again, what's with the best friend and the partner thing? Okay, but three that's years so later, fucked. my affair partner. So would that have been the best friend? I mean, or is I guess. It def- a different person, like karma, kind of thing. Oh, interesting. Okay, my affair partner was the best man. At my ex's second wedding. I don't know. That's too much but for me. But still, I mean, girl, get it together. Lovingly. <laughs> my baby daddy lied about going to group meetings for people with Asperger's. He was using my car to go see his other girlfriend. I found out because her mom messaged me to see if we were still together because he told him I was crazy and wouldn't leave him alone. Dead. You're driving my car? Oh, my God. To... Your other, your other girlfriend. No. Oh, my God. Okay, so one of the things that I caught when I found, like, the slew of fucking evidence about my ex cheating was that he kept telling me he was going to Orange Theory Fitness that was, like, a mile down the street from our house. He was driving to Sherman Oaks, like, a 30-minute drive from where we lived, to go to Barry's boot camp with her. Like, why what do they do What would he have done if do he would have popped up there at Orange Theory? Right. Because it's a mile. Right. He would have been better off – Telling you that he was right. going 30 minutes away yeah. so that you would not be likely to right. go down. Right, like I found this random fitness studio. It's crazy. But like who lies to go to an Asperger's meeting? Like, what? What a lie. That's ridiculous. And that's not the first time I've heard the they took the girl's car. I just had one of my good friends, Carly Craig, on my show. Um, and she, her story is fucking insane. But he would take her car to go cheat on her but was like open about it was like this is a girl who needs help she's trying to kill herself um i have to go over there and make sure she's okay and he was like going over and like snorting coke off of her ass and fucking like having sex with her so my ex was men are trash is like oh yeah consensus of this episode there's five percent really great men in the world and the rest you need to be wary of (laughs) literally i know my ex used to drive my car i had a white mercedes at the time and he would drive my car um and be with his ex-girlfriend what? And I would just like why not would, take your own car? Well, he didn't have one. Oh, there it is. <laughs> winner, 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 <laughs> chicken dinner. Um, so he, yeah, he would do that, and then he would come up with this whole like lie, and I would just be like, his own grandmother told me the truth. Oh my! God. And I'm just like, you're dumb. Like you're dumb. And I have two kids with him, so Ugh. awesome. Love that for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one. One night in college, I went out with my boyfriend of three years. On the way home, he thought it would be funny to run a red light. Fun fact, a cop was sitting at the light and pulled him over and arrested him for a DUI. He wasn't allowed to take anything with him, so I had his phone. I started working on getting him a bail bondsman, but when I unlocked his phone, I saw an ultrasound picture. (gasps) What? After that, I started going through his whole phone and found out he cheated on me with a local bartender and got her pregnant. I found several other girls he was messaging, exchanging nudes with, and having various entanglements. He called me from jail that night, and I let him know our relationship was was over. He wouldn't be getting his house key back, and his things would be dropped off at his mom's house. An ultrasound picture? Wow. Oh, no. That's, like, next level. Could you imagine? You're, like, with someone. And I think that's, like... Oh, my God. That's so brutal. Heartbreaking. Like, you're with somebody for three years. That's a long time. That's an, These are all really gnarly stories. We do an a segment on, on my podcast called FML Stories where we have people submit shit like this. So if any of you guys that submitted these are listening, please send them over to me. <laughs> these are gold. I can't fucking imagine that. 
That's horrible. Yeah, dude. Because then you're bringing, like, this innocent life into it that has yeah. nothing to do with it, but, like, also, also, like, caused a lot of pain. Yeah, but, like, also... Well, I guess the baby didn't cause the pain. The people caused yeah, the pain. Yeah, but people that cheat, like, wrap your shit up. Like, what are you doing? Oh my God. It's, like, A plus but just, B like, be equals single. C, guys. Just be single. Right. Just be fucking right. single. Like, yeah. I know not every single thing in life is going to be black and white like that. Like, I get that. But also, like, if you're, you're cheating with multiple people, you're talking to multiple people, you're sleeping, you're having unprotected sex so now you're not just putting your own health at risk you're putting my health at risk yeah that was one of the biggest things for me when I found out about all the cheating I was like oh my god I have to go get fucking tested right now yeah because like he's been with this chick Mm -hmm. who knows where she's been who else has he been with yep it was terrifying and that was one of the things it's like the disrespect of your body when you go through something like that is so fucked up Mm -hmm. and it's like just leave like we didn't own anything together we didn't have no assets, yet. no like, kids. No. It was really a simple divorce, right. dude. Totally. Like, just leave. Oh, my God. I can't. Thank you so much for coming on Barely Famous. You're Do you so want to plug welcome. anything besides your books? You um, have- yeah, the books are exclusively on Amazon. The first one is Eat, Pray, FML. The sequel is The Ridiculous Misadventures of a Single Girl. Um, they're also on audiobook. Um, and the my podcast is FML Talk. You can find everything on eatprayfml.com. And I'm at Gabrielle Stone. Thank you. Thank you, girl.